Hey Robot fans, welcome back to the build. Last time we got the belt all set up and took the suit for a little stroll in the park. In today's explosive episode, we're going to build some thermal detonators. If we look at our CRL here, we can see that Commander Bao has two thermal detonators. The first one is the common belt mounted one, which I think is found on every single clone, but Commander Bao also has a second thermal detonator mounted just below the radio pack. And that is going to be a little bit trickier, so let's get right into that. I started by printing a two-piece cap for both of the detonators. I printed these in two parts so I can easily access all of this interior stuff for sanding and finishing, and then they will just glue together to form the full cap. For the shaft of the pipe, I'm going to use some standard two-inch PVC pipe, which I picked up in a two-foot section at Lowe's for a couple bucks. I used a chop saw to cut the pipe into four six-inch pieces, two of which will make up the main body of the detonators. So why is this debt so tricky? Well first it needs to mount on this back surface which is not only not flat but it's actually radius on two axes. And just like our radio pack I want this to be removable which means no visible mounting structure is to remain on the armor. I hopped into 3D Studio Max and built out these two mounts. They should hug the surface pretty well and they have built in recesses for these bad boys. 2 inch by 1 quarter inch by 1 eighth inch N52 rare earth magnets. These should be plenty strong to hold the debt into place while still making it removable. I used my trusty pole identifier to make sure I'm using opposite pole installation. This will ensure no accidental upside down mountings. With that all done, I started my usual finishing process on the mounts and stopped about halfway through just to make sure my magnets really are able to hold on tight enough, which luckily they are, but I just can't shake this feeling that the PVC pipe is unnecessarily heavy. Just for kicks, I printed out a thinner walled shaft and did some weight tests. As you can see here, the 3D printed version weighs less than half of the PVC version. Don't get me wrong, the mags were holding up that PVC just fine but I keep getting these visions of this thing getting dislodged mid-troop and having to deal with all that. At least with this lighter pipe, that will give me that much more holding power onto this double radius back. With that resolved, I continued with the finishing process on all of the parts to bring both detonator assemblies to a nice smooth white and the mounting rings to a nice smooth black using Krylon Fusion for plastics. For more information on this finishing process, you could check out my arms video a little earlier in the series. For the main body of the belt detonator, I'm still going to be using the PVC. If you remember back to the last video, these were installed with some pretty beefy clevis pins, so I'm not too concerned about a couple extra ounces. While I was finishing everything, I also finished up the button greeblies for these two detonators. These were printed in two pieces and sandwiched together. I did this so I could have a radius back for easy gluing onto the round detonator shaft. I did the same thing for the longer seven button greebly on the belt detonator. This 7-button Greebly is a little special in that it requires just a touch of our Krylon Global Blue paint. After I had it sprayed down to white, I masked off some of the buttons and sprayed it to give it some of that wonderful 501st Blue. With everything painted, we can begin our assembly process. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a head start on the weathering by dirtying up the insides of these caps before I install them. After that, it's just as easy as a drop of glue and sandwiching them together. For the detonator on the back, we need to make sure that the three button greebly, the square portion of the end cap, and the flat part of the bracket that attaches to the back are all on an even plane. I'm going to start by installing the three button greebly. For horizontal position, I want it to be one bracket width away from the actual bracket, so I just lined up both brackets on one side and made a mark. Then I glued the left edge of the greebly to that mark. Then I attached the bracket and the end cap, visually aligned them all, and glued the bracket to the end cap and both of those onto the thermal debt. As the glue dries, I can see that we are all in line and looking pretty good. I don't trust my eye to be able to perfectly align two brackets, so we're going to let the back armor do that for us. With the left edge all glued down firmly, I slid the bracket and the end cap onto the right side pretty loosely. Then using the matching magnets, I snapped the left end in place. You can see here that one magnet is enough to hold the whole detonator in place. This is a very good sign. Then I let the magnet on the other side align the orientation of the bracket. With the bracket locked into place, I manually adjusted the end cap so the square of the end cap was in line with the bracket. When all of this was set in place, I added some glue to the least visible portion of the debt and wiped away the excess. I let this glue cure overnight and then we were good to go on our weathering. For my weathering, I just continued more of what I did on the end caps as far as my dry brushing and then I added in some GAT style scratches and blaster marks. To see more on this weathering process, check out the legs video that came out a few videos back. 
The last bit of business on this back detonator is permanently mounting the magnets to the inside of the armor. To do that, I attached my det in its desired position, traced the magnets inside the armor, and then added some glue. Then I reattached the det to hold it all in place while the glue dried. Easy peasy. Now for the belt detonator. This one needs to come on and off also, but the mounting hardware is all inside of the main tube, so we need some semi-permanent access to the guts of the det. This may surprise you, but we're going to use magnets. I printed the inside of the end cap with recesses for three N52 magnets. I also printed a matching end piece for the end of the PVC pipe. I got all four pieces filled with magnets and glued the end pieces onto the PVC tube. In the end, I decided to only go with two magnets for each connection because the pull force was plenty and it really has nothing to do with the fact that I didn't order enough magnets. One of the optional level 3 certification guidelines in the CRL is to have a 1 8 to 1 4 inch wide rectangular base connecting the detonator to the belt. No problem there, I printed out a nice rectangular base for the back of the det with some holes for the coming clevis pins and glued that onto the back of the tube. Lastly, I glued the seven button greebly onto the front. There is one last bit of installation on these caps. If we look back to the inside of the end cap that I printed, I also printed it with this little hoop. When these end caps detach from the body, whether it be intentionally or otherwise, we don't want them falling on the floor and breaking or rolling off and getting lost, so I'm going to tether them together with some elastic strap. I hooked the strap through one of my hoops here and sewed the connection. Then I routed it through the pipe and repeated it on the other side. Now the two caps are connected together and can't fall to the floor. Great idea, right? You guessed it. Gats. The last bit here was just to weather this thing up. Blast marks, dry brush vignetting, you know the routine by now. Let's just skip right on ahead to the big suit up. We are getting so close now. In the last video, I mentioned that there were four more videos coming, but I'm actually combining two of those videos. And with this video out of the way, that leaves just two more videos left until we finish this armor completely. If you've been watching this series from the beginning, thank you, and we're almost there. If you just found this series, you have about four weeks to catch up before the big final reveal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as always, we are going to finish with a progression shot, and I will see you guys next time.